Welcome back, everybody. How was the ride? Outstanding. We've, uh, we've got a few items on the agenda. Uh, Councillor Christian Wong Tan is here to say a few words. Uh, Say a few words, and we've also got uh, a little surprise for everybody, uh, which uh, we've got in store right after the speeches. So stay tuned. I'd like to introduce Councillor Wong Tan. Thank you very much, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm sorry I wasn't able to join you for the ride this uh, evening, although it's a perfect, perfect day for it. I, uh, I see strength in numbers, and uh, today certainly the uh, the crowd is here, and I can see that this uh, that this particular group is mobilized and ready to take particular action. I say, are you ready for action? I, uh, I suspect it as much. You know, I want to give you a little bit of, of information. Um, there was a meeting on April the third. It was held at Jarvis Collegiate. And that meeting was called the Jarvis Cultural Corridor Meeting, which we held in War 27. That meeting was attended by close to 150 residents, as well as business owners from the ward and from beyond. It was represented uh, very well by at least six resident associations from the immediate neighborhood, and, uh, and many people filled out a survey. We received 120 completed surveys that set out some strategic priorities for us for Jarvis in the upcoming future. Would you like to know what those priorities are? Yeah. This is what came out of that consultation meeting. There were at least three high-level priorities that folks said that we must work on. Number one, they wanted to ensure that we were going to repurpose Jarvis as a cultural corridor just as it was identified in the 2001 waterfront plan when we said that Jarvis was an important cultural street in Toronto along with uh, Young and John Street. That was part of the city's uh, strategic policy and planning direction and that is going to be the direction for War 27. That should be the direction for Jarvis Street with your help. For, for the residents uh, is that Jarvis needs to be a green corridor and that was very clear overwhelmingly people said they wanted the quality of life on Jarvis to be green and the air to be clean that the pedestrians need to be able to walk through a more enhanced and beautiful streetscape and that that streetscape needed to reflect the diversity of the city by ensuring beauty, art, and culture, and remembering this important street for what it is, which has historical significance. So that's number two. There has to be a significant greening environmental strategy on Jarvis, determined by you. The third priority, the one that seemed to have been the overarching priority that began in discussions years before was the removal of the fifth lane and ensuring that the fifth lane did not come back by ensuring a livable, greener, more sustainable, pedestrian friendly street. So the removal of the fifth lane was a community priority. And then the flip of that, on the opposite side of that discussion, was the retention of the Jarvis bike lanes. because you are here on bicycles or because you're cycling advocates. I'm telling you this as a ward councillor I've heard from my community and this is what they're looking for from me in terms of leadership at City Hall. People have said, and these are residents in my ward, and I can tell you that I can list the six neighborhood associations that showed up and represented themselves that night. There's the Bloor East Neighborhood Association, and this is for the press. The Upper Jarvis uh, resident Association, the Church Wellesley Neighborhood Association, Woo! Thank you. the Bay Clover Hill Community Association, the Garden District Resident Association, the Moss Park Resident Association. That's six 
neighborhood association, all within the immediate vicinity and catchment, all surrounded by Jarvis. That is a significant message, not just to myself, and not just to this crowd who's, who's gathered here today, but also it should be a message clearly sent to City Hall that this is what the residents and business owners of Ward 27 want. You have been very, very patient considering where we began this discussion last year. Incredibly patient. There's been many things that have taken place around discussions of Jarvis that have not been fair. They have not been equitable. They have not been respectful. I'd like to bring that discourse back to City Hall. I'd like to ensure that we have an honest conversation on how we build our city, how we actually improve our neighborhoods, and how we actually improve that street, which is so important to every single one of us. I have a draft letter to Minister Bradley, who is the Minister of the Environment, is a cabinet minister, sits at Queen's Park. What I'm asking Minister Bradley for is very simple. I'd like him to call to initiate a Class C environmental assessment, which will at least bring us some open, transparent consultation, if nothing else. <laughs> who've said that they weren't consulted at the beginning of the process. And then there are folks here who said you weren't consulted like myself in, 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 in May. So let's have that consultation. I held a very localized consultation on April the 3rd that brought out 150 people. I'm willing, and I think you are, ready to have an open, clear, honest discussion about the future of Jarvis Street one that incorporates the concept of complete streets, one that, pr uh, that prioritizes heritage, a greening strategy, and keeping out the reversible fifth lane and keeping the bike lanes. Let's do that together. I'm ready to work with you. I'm ready to work with anybody in that building. I'm ready to work with anyone that's willing to improve our street, our neighborhood, and our city. Thank you very much.